Good. Um, let me open up my this a little bit. You guys can see me okay up there in the probably the right hand corner. Okay, so this um, webinar is all about how to create phone scripts that work. I am the host. My name is Dave Simon. You can learn more about me at davesimonsmusic.com. Um, about me, about Dave. I'm a rock band curriculum writer. I created Kids Rock and Your Rockers and a camp program. I also do a small business coaching called Music Studio Mastery. I'm also the host of the podcast Music Lessons and Marketing. So here's the outline of today's webinar. I'm gonna establish some basic sales concepts. I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step sales pitch, and then we're gonna conduct a live sales pitch. And um, Allison Goldstein is gonna be our victim, I mean our subject today. She might, she's gonna text me um, when she's ready to come on, although she might actually just show up. She's my next door neighbor. Um, and then at the very end, there's gonna be an offer to join Music Studio Mastery. I'll tell you more about that at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna have some different quotes um, here. Well, let's start off with the quote by Zig Ziglar. It says, people don't buy products. They buy what the product does for them. If you focus on your product while you're selling it or even in your marketing, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Another way to kind of reword um, Zig Ziglar is uh, people don't buy music lessons. They, they pay or they buy what music lessons um, what it does for them, which is, that's a tough thing then to sell. It's, it's easy to go, well, our music lessons were 30 minutes long, here's how much they cost, and this is what they do in the lessons, but people aren't interested in that. They are interested in what the music lesson does for them. So that's gonna require some digging and some soul searching to come up with that um, answer for yourself. Let's talk for a second about sales versus marketing. Marketing, it's, it, it's a message. It's a way of communicating an idea that you have. And sales is a real-time conversation. It's supported by your marketing. So your marketing is first, and it's the framework for your, um, your selling, and then the selling is, or the sales is that conversation. Yes, you can have a sales um, email exchange, but it's not the, um, same as as a phone call or ideally as an in-person you know sales pitch but you know it's it's rare that i mean that somebody walks in off the street i mean it depends where you're located but you know if you could sit face to face with somebody and pitch to them that would be ideal and as you know that's not always the case so here's some recommended marketing pieces and in the my coaching program uh, music studio mastery we work on these where i going to just touch on these today. You need a mission statement, a purpose. You know, what, um, what is, you know, what is it that, that you're, what impact is your music studio having on the world? What's your mission? Where are you trying to go? You need that. You need a we believe statement. This is your whole purpose. This is, you know, the, the impact that you're having on kids' lives. And then a general sales page. Again, in Music uh, Studio Mastery, it, you know, it takes us a few weeks, but we, we get through creating these core um, sales pieces. My main sales message, this is, was what I use for my music studio. We believe all people can play music. Our approach to lessons is based on the way kids learn a language, by listening, imitating, and speaking. We believe so many kids struggle in music lessons because they're taught to read music before they can play or speak music. The sooner a child is playing music, the sooner they feel a sense of success and accomplishment. So that's kind of my main selling message. There's a we believe statement in there. We believe all people can play music, talks about our approach and, um, and a little bit of our philosophy. Let's look now at the successful selling formula. Remember this acronym if you can, LEET, that's easy to remember, L-E-E-T. L is for likability, E is for empathy, E is for expertise, and T is for trust. If you can establish yourself as a likable person, if you can display empathy, 
and you can um, show expertise, trust will begin to form. Once the prospective customer trusts you, they become that much more likely to buy for you, buy from you. You can sell to people, you can sell lessons without them perceiving you as, as likable, without um, them perceiving you as empathetic, and without them um, you know, perceiving you as an expert. They might not trust you, they'll still sign up for the lesson, but you have, if you can establish these things, you're, you know, you're on the, a good start to a good relationship with your customer. Um, really quick, I just want to check, oh wow, we got lots of people now, 12 people on the phone, very exciting. Um, what makes a person likable? People, take note, this is something that you can do um, when you're at a cocktail party, meeting people. You wanna be likable, right? You wanna be perceived as likable. Um, the best way to be likable is to ask questions to people that trigger positive feelings. So, um, you know, we all hopefully do that. You know, when you meet somebody at, at a cocktail party, nobody goes to cocktail parties anymore, but we still talk about them. Um, is it better off to start just throwing information at them, trying to impress the person about yourself? Or are you better off by asking questions? Asking questions is gonna make them feel good. And what else, what else makes them likable? Number two, you asking questions that reveals customers' needs. That's something that you need to identify. And then you ask follow-up questions that probe deeper in the customer's needs. Don't talk about you unless it validates the um, validates what the customer is, is feeling. So if these are the things that you can do to make yourself likable. It's really about asking questions. How to establish trust? By um, providing insight. If you can get the person you know, on, the, on the other line to say to themselves, wow, I, I never thought about music lessons quite like this before. They're gonna begin to trust you and they're gonna begin to feel that you're an expert. If you can articulate the customer's desire in a way that they never did or that they were never able to, you're gonna um, establish yourself as an expert and you're gonna to begin to, they're gonna to begin to trust you more, that you're articulating for them a, a desire that they have. And you can, by displaying expertise, or you can dis display your expertise by discussing the benefits before the features of music lessons. And that's hard to do. It's easier to talk about the um, it's easier to talk about the features of music lessons. Oh, they're 30 minutes long and they work on scales and they learn music theory. Those are the features, but what are the benefits? Lead with the benefits. Talk about those first, because that's what moms are interested in. Moms are not interested in music lessons. They're interested in what music lessons are going to do for their child, how they're going to impact their child. Behind every purchase, here's another quote, behind every purchase, there lies a problem. I'm not sure who said it, but I read that recently. So we buy things because we feel, we feel unfulfilled. There's something lacking in our lives. So what is lacking in a, in a mother's life when she reaches out to you um, for music lessons? You need to figure out what that is. And once you figure that out, you can do a better job of selling. So here's my selling strategy. My selling strategy is conversational sales. Hold on one second, people. I just wanna check one thing. Um, oh, cool. All's looking good on my end. My, uh, conversa or my strategy is conversational sales, mean, meaning I make a statement and then I follow it with a question. The question my question is my way to um, engage the, the person on the phone back in, into the, um, into the sales process. Here's my outline of a 15 minute sales call. We'll see when Allison pops on, if I can hops on the, you know, or shows up, she might show up here. See if I can do this deal in 15 minutes. Um, PENPA, remember this acronym. You want to, in, within 15 minutes, you want to identify the players, elevator pitch, need analysis, and I'm gonna pitch, and then I'm going to ask. Um, the elevator pitch, that's something that the person expects. They're expecting that. But the need analysis, they're not expecting that. And I'm going to talk about what that all means. 
So again, that's the players. I'm going to do an elevator pitch. I'm going to conduct a need analysis. That sounds really fancy, but it's not. Once you see it, you'll get it. I'm going to pitch. I'm finally going to pitch. And then I'm going to ask for the sale. Well, let's break it down. So now we're, the call has begun. We see that little timer up there. In 30 seconds, I want to ask the mom, what's your name, mom? What's your child's name? What's your kid's age? And what instrument are you interested in? You can really do that in 15 seconds. Sales tip number one, refer to the child by name throughout the call. Say the parent's name at the end of the call. Say the kids, or say the word kid or kids when talking about something fun. So for example, you know, these kids have such a great time getting up on stage and performing for their friends and family. So you're talking about something fun. I like to use the word kid or kids. Say the word child or children when you want to display your expertise. So for example, I've noticed that when a child is in a music lesson and, and then kind of fill in the blank from there. So I really try to mix it up. And then at the very end of the call, and I'll say when Allison comes on, I'll say, and I, and I won't refer to Allison by name during the call. I'll refer to her child um, by first name throughout the call. But at the very end, I'll say, well, Allison, it was great talking to you today. And um, that's really important. Okay, now we're at the elevator pitch. We're at the 30 second mark, okay? We did the, you know, what's your name, what's your kid's name, kid's age, instrument. And the whole purpose of an elevator pitch is to create curiosity, to leave the listener wanting more, to establish your expertise and credibility, and to define a problem, a solution, and a happy ending. In your elevator pitch, you should memorize it, and all of your staff should memorize it, and you should live by it. This is tough, people. Your elevator pitch, everyone in your staff needs to know it. If they don't know it, then that means they don't, they're not clear on what the mission is. There's a disconnect. And it, it's really common that your staff doesn't know um, what your mission is. That's a problem. It's a huge problem. You're going to be limited in the how you can grow. And then um, you need to live by your elevator pitch. You need to ask yourself every day, how are we living up to this promise that we're making? Every staff meeting should start off with, guys, what's our, you know, our mission? State the mission. Okay, let's talk. What are we doing to make this a, a reality? If you have an elevator pitch or a mission statement and you're not delivering on it, your business, um, it's a sham. It, it's just empty sales talk. So you wanna really make sure that you're delivering. I'm gonna check the time here because Allison, okay, eh, 15 minutes, we're gonna be hearing from Allison. Um, okay, so we did the, um, we haven't done the elevator pitch yet, but we got the, you know, the parents, the, the kid's name, mom's name, and we're gonna go into the elevator pitch, but first we're gonna set the expectation of the sales call and we're gonna get yes number one. We want mom to say yes as much as possible because the more she says yes, the more we're guiding her to the finish line, where we're finally gonna say, and are you ready to sign up? And she's in the habit of saying yes to you. So we want her at that point to say yes. Um, let me tell you a little bit about our school. And then I'd like to ask you a few questions about Kevin. Sound good? Mom says, sure. So Kevin's gonna be the kid that we're talking about. Now, we're gonna go into the elevator pitch. Again, quickly review. We're only just like a few seconds in. Got everyone's name. Said, hey, well, I'm gonna um, tell you a little bit about our school and I'm gonna ask you some uh, questions uh, about Kevin. Does that sound good? Now we're gonna go to the pitch, elevator pitch. Our school's based on the idea that kids often think playing an instrument's hard to do. We make playing an instrument fun, easy, and accessible, which helps kids feel good about themselves and their musical abilities. That's it. That's the pitch, that's the elevator pitch. Let's break it down, let's break it down here. Elevator pitch breakdown. And hey, if any of you have an elevator pitch, post it in the, um, in the chat. Maybe you, um, you have a Donald Miller's, um, what's it called? Um, One-liner, Donald Miller, it's the same thing. Post your one-liner elevator, uh, pitch in the chat uh, 
over there in the chat section. Let's break down the elevator pitch. So there's a we believe statement. This establishes authority, purpose, and expertise. We believe is great. And in the moment you say, I believe, people are listening. Anyone can play. So I say anyone can play music. That's tapping into their pain and it's giving them some relief because I'm saying, look, you believe that not everyone can play. It's true that they can play. And you're making the promise that you're going to um, make good, you know, that, that their child will be able to play music and they'll perceive it as easy at your music studio. And it helps kids feel good. That's mom's objective and hope. That's all she wants. Mom doesn't care about music lessons. Don't talk about music lessons. Talk about them when it's appropriate, when it's time to talk about them. Mom, all mom cares about is getting her kid to feel good. And whether she'll go to karate, she'll go to dance, she'll go to gymnastics, whatever it takes. Once that good feeling, that confidence and um, you know, feeling of success occurs, that's what mom's sticking with. So you need to like show mom, look, I get it. This is what you're looking for. And we're gonna help you achieve that objective. We're not gonna talk about music lessons yet. Sales tip number two. Listen to see if, if the prospect says anything after your pitch. Huh, that's interesting. So you do your little elevator pitch, and if mom says, oh, that's interesting, it means you made a connection. It's good. Maybe just listen for a, a moan of approval. Hmm. Okay, so that means you connected. Don't panic if you hear crickets after your elevator pitch. So to review the pitch, our school is based on the idea that kids often think that playing an instrument is hard to do. We make playing an instrument fun, easy, and accessible, which helps kids feel good about themselves and their musical abilities. Hmm, that's interesting, says mom. Good, you made a connection, or maybe it's crickets, fine. You just move ahead. Now we're gonna move into, this is where your skill, your sales skills first really get tested. Need analysis. We're at the one minute mark of this phone call. And for the next seven, eight minutes, you're gonna be in need analysis. You're gonna ask questions. You're gonna uncover your customers' wants, desires, pain points, and fears. This information will allow you to personalize your pitch. Without this information, you're pitching in the dark. Okay, so it's sort of like if you're a waiter and you go up to a, a table and um, you just start reading off specials, that's what if everyone at the table is a vegetarian? You're just pitching in the dark, you don't know. You know, so the more you can learn about your customer, the more you can personalize and customize your pitch. Uh, pitch. The desired thought during need analysis is this person gets me, I like this person. This person seems trustworthy. So here is my need analysis, analysis question. You only need one question. Just curious, what inspired you to seek out uh, music lessons? That's an invitation to open up and talk. Mom's gonna talk a lot with that question. It's, it's a flattering question. It implies that they're an inspired person and encourages them to reveal their emotional need, their pain point, reveals their emotional and psychological sweet spot. So let's just review where we're at. You came out, you got um, every, all the players' names, you then um, say, hey, here's how the call is gonna go. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our studio. I'm gonna ask you uh, some questions about Kevin. Does that sound good? Sure, and you came out with your um, elevator pitch. Our school is based on this idea that a lot of kids perceive playing an instrument as something that's hard to do. We make playing music fun and easy so kids feel successful and good about themselves. I'm just curious, what inspired you to seek out lessons? Fasten your seatbelt, sit back and listen. Listen carefully. You have given mom an invitation to talk. It's the equivalent of you going to the doctor and the doctor says, so what seems to be the problem? It's an invitation for you to talk. During the need analysis, this is sales tip number three. Listen carefully. Don't interrupt the person. Note, pen and paper, key words and phrases that the customer is saying. When Allison comes on, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Um, you wanna, it says phrases are words that reveal the pain point. You wanna listen to words that they say that reveal the pain point. Ask follow-up questions until the pain point's revealed. And we're gonna see an example of a need analysis in a second. 
And then you want to take that pain point once it's revealed and you're going to weave it into your sales pitch. And we'll take a look at that. Common pain points, identity. Kid, mom's looking for an activity that the kid can kind of claim as their own. Oh, this is my son, Kevin, the musician. You know, Kevin's eight. He doesn't have an identity yet. Oh, this is my son, Kevin, the football player. Um, confidence. Parents are looking for an activity that's going to help their kids' a confidence and emotional well-being. Intelligence. They want their kids to be smarter and more competitive. A lot of people believe that, um, you know, that music can make people intelligent, more intelligent. I'm just curious. Do any of you, any of you on this live webinar ever use intelligence um, as a, as a, as a pain point to, to use in your, um, so in, in your pitching. Also status. Actually, any one of these. I'd, I'd love to hear, read some of your comments regarding some of the different uh, pain points that you use. Um, status. You know, the minute a kid's a musician, their status is increased. Now they're looked as their peers, as a gifted person. Mom gets to brag. This is my son, Kevin, the musician. It increases her status. She's perceived as a, a, a good mother and as, um, you know, if her kid's talented, that reflects on her. And people also are interested in work ethic, in a child developing um, a strong work ethic. Here we go. Um, here's some from Katie and saying identity, confidence, and status. So Katie, those are things that, that um, looks like you're using in your sales pitch. Anyone else? And, and Katie, feel free to kind of add maybe some lines that you use. But these are the common pain points. If you can think of another area, you know, write in the, the chat here some other pain points that you think parents have. Pain points really, a it doesn't have to be painful. It can be a desire. It's something they're looking for. They're looking for identity, confidence, emotional well-being, intelligence, status for the child and for themselves, and then work ethic. If you can think of anything else, add it. I've spoken about how piano can stimulate. I'm reading, um, this is KV's comment. I've spoken about how piano can stimulate different parts of the brain. Yeah, this helps improve academic performance. For all of us musicians, we know when we're playing music, our brains are lit up. Nothing gets that brain moving like um, playing an instrument and apparently improvising even more so. Let's move onward. Okay, so here's a neat analysis in real time. So did my elevator pitch and then I said, um, let's say mom's name is Jennifer. Jennifer, I'm just curious, what inspired you to seek out uh, music lessons? Well, you know, Kevin tried soccer in the fall and that was okay. I, I thought maybe we should try music and see if he likes it. Salesperson says, was soccer not a good experience for him? Because I haven't, she hasn't revealed the pain point yet. I'm going to dig in a little bit. Let's see what happened in soccer. I said, well, it was fine. He never complained about it. The other boys on his team, were really nice, much more competitive than Kevin. And he was often disappointed in himself after the game. Boom, there's the pain point disappointed, lack of confidence. So he wasn't able to find identity. Now I'm gonna, okay, dig in a little bit more. Well, it sounds like it didn't give him the confidence boost you had hoped for. No, totally. I think he's more of a sports fan than an athlete. Well, perhaps music or some other creative activity will resonate with him. Mom says, that's what I'm hoping for. All right, now we're in position to do some selling. What's mom's pain point? Is she's looking for connection. And um, he's, Kevin's experienced failure before. before. I'm going to watch my time here for Alyssa. Ooh, any minute. Um, you know, he's experienced failure before, and she wants him to experience success. All right. We got a note, uh, something here from Kristen. Talk to parents about how playing an instrument helps develop the brain and also develops a good self-discipline practice. And Kristen, we've talked about this in the music Studio Mastery Group, the um, competitive edge that you and other moms who own studios have is that you can talk to your customers from their perspective. As a mother myself, boom, and now you're now there's empathy and you're aligning with your customers. I'm a father, so I can say, well, as a parent myself or, or as a father, so we can, can make, make that connection that way. Sales tip number four. 
look for seeds, listen for seeds and need analysis to weave into the pitch. So mom talked about, um, you know, how Kevin was really disappointed in himself. I'm going to write that word down, write it down because in my sales pitch, I'm going to see if I can weave that back in. When Alyssa, when Allison's talking to me, I'm going to listen for pain points and I'm going to try to weave it into the pitch. Just so you know, if Allison calls in right, right in the middle of this, we're just going to go to her and then um, we'll hop back into this. So need analysis breakdown. What's the pain point? Mom wants her son to make a connection to, to, uh, to find he's good at, to find something he's good at, to boost his self-confidence, something he can be proud of and say, I'm really good at, boom, blank, fill in the blank. Took mom a little bit in this need analysis for me to discover the pain point and articulate it. The salesperson displayed empathy and, I, and built trust. Mom might have, hold on here. Mom might have found this to be therapeutic, just, just talking about Kevin, just talking about it and being um, asked questions about her son. Because you know what? No one's really ever, um, nobody's really ever asked her questions about Kevin in soccer before. So it feels really good about it. There's going to be a Q&A at the end, by the way. I do see there's a, a, a question. I'm going to look at this question really quick. Kurt, loaded with information. Will you offer a replay? Yes. I started writing things down. Too much information. I quit writing. Yeah. I sh Kurt, thank you for pointing that out. Um, yeah, you guys are all going to get sent a copy of this. So um, mom is now forming a positive feeling toward the salesperson. Just so let me just back it up what we've done so far. I got all the name of the players. I, um, I said, mom, here's how the sales call is going to go down. I'm going to tell you about the school. I'm going to ask about your kid. Is that okay? Yes. First, yes. And then I did need analysis. So oh no, elevator pitch. Here's what we're all about. What inspired you to seek out lessons? I'm writing down all these notes. We're, I'm digging in a little bit with um, mom and need analysis. And now, ah, a quote from Zig Ziglar again, lead with the customer's problem or uh, lead with need. I love that. He, he keeps going back to that. This idea of lead with need, lead with your customer's problem or desire. The customer is the hero of the story. Um, just checking to see if Allison texted me. Um, nope. Lead with the customer's problem or desire. The customer is the hero in the story, not you or your product. So if you come out talking about you and your product, you're not leading. That's the, the, the customer is like fighting to pay attention. Go back to the cocktail party and you meet someone and they're like, well, you know, I'm the president of this and I'm that. And they're telling you all, it's like, okay, pay attention, pay attention. It's hard to pay attention, but it's easier when um, you're asking questions and the person's responding. So same with here is you want to understand the customer's need and you want to, all of your marketing should always lead with their need. Here's the pitch. Okay. We're at minute eight. Now we didn't need analysis. Um, and now mom is all ears. This is the eight minute mark. And we're going to talk for, we're going to, I'm going to pitch for a minute. And, um, mom's all ears. Now you just gave her an opportunity to talk about her child in a way that makes her feel good. Now it's your turn to talk. And I bet this is Allison. Allison, is that you? Either Allison or my wife. Al oh, Carrie, is that you? They're not responding. Whoever has walked into my house, but I have a text from Allison. She's saying, are you, are we ready for her? And I said, yes, I'm going to go to headphones now. Allison's going to hop on in um, and read through this pitch as you're looking at this. We're going to hear a ding probably. And then Allison's going to pop on there. Um, so salesperson, yeah, so my whole thing is that by ask, by need analysis, the mom feels like she's obligated to really listen to you now. A salesperson says, our approach to lessons is based on the way kids learn language. By listening, ah, Allison, are you there? I heard you ding. Let me look and see if I have to. Hello. Hey, you there, Allison? Yeah, hang on one second. Can you guys hear Allison okay? 
Allison. Name the artist, people. Who wrote Allison? And Allison, don't. Kurt, you, you can hear Allison. Allison, don't say the artist. Hi. Hi. We, we, we got a trivia question on Allison. Is who wrote Allison? We're waiting. I, do you know? I'm waiting. Answer? People, don't answer. People are chatting. We have a little chat. You probably can't see it. Um, here we go. Welcome, Allison. We've been expecting you. That's from KV. Okay. Hi. Well, as we get started, um, I'm sure someone will chime in. Participants can't see the chat. Elvis Costello, you got it. Oh, you guys can't see the chat. You should be able to. Um, and you, yeah, it is Elvis Costello, his first album. I think my aim is true. Um, okay, so Allison, here's, first of all, I want to thank you for, um, for joining us here today. And Sure. Um, Allison, my, I, you and or my wife, how do I, how would you radically say that? You and my wife were talking and I overheard you saying something about your daughter taking piano lessons and, and quitting, correct? That is, uh, it was actually guitar. Oh, guitar. Sorry. And, and um, yes. Okay. And I'm not going to ask you your daughter's name. I'm going to try to remain as um, oblivious as possible. And can okay. you, and really quick, and the listeners, can you guys see the chat? If you can't see the chat, you should be able to look at the bottom of your screen. There should be a chat button or maybe a more button, and then you can see the chat there. Ah, you guys can't see it, huh? The chat window is empty for participants. That's crazy. Hold on, disable. Let me, let me see if I can enable that. I'm so bummed you guys can't see that. You only see your comments. Oh, well, well, that's no fun. Um, all right, well, we can move on. I'll, I'll, I'll read comments as they come in. Um, okay, Allison, so I, you know, before we got on the call today, I said I want you to think about what might um, inspire you or motivate you to, to sign your, your child back up for guitar lessons, okay? Okay, so here's what we're going to do, Allison, is we're going to do a sales role play. I am the owner of a music studio, and you've decided for whatever reason to um, look for guitar lessons for your, for your daughter, okay? And mm -hmm. everything you're going to share with me is going to be based on um, your, the reality of what's gone on with your daughter. Are you ready to go? I think so. Okay, so the phone rings, and I pick it up, and I say, Cleveland Music Academy, this is Dave. How can I help you? Um, I was interested in hearing what kind of music, uh, get specifically guitar lessons you offer for um, young children, like around seven years old. Okay, well, great. I just, let me just ask you uh, a few questions first, and then I want to hear all about this young child in your household. Um, first of all, what is your name? My name's Allison. Allison, and what is your child's name? Liel. Liel? Mm-hmm. And, and you said Liel seven? Yes. Well, great. Well, so what I want to do is I want to tell you a little bit about our school, and then I just want to ask you a few uh, questions for, uh, about Liel. Does that work for you? Sure. Yeah, great. Well, our school is really based on this idea that all kids love music and uh, you know a lot of kids maybe most kids perceive playing an instrument that's something that's hard to do and we make music lessons fun and easy which really helps kids connect with music and feel good about themselves and feel confident in in, in their abilities i'm just curious um, what inspired you to seek out uh, music lessons for leo um she wanted to learn how to play guitar uh -huh. uh, she wants to learn how to play guitar so we have tried in the past and she's given up she doesn't like to practice mm. she doesn't want to practice and <laughs> and okay so she wasn't practicing i'm just curious did she like the lesson experience like going um, to see her teacher and the time there 
I think so. I think maybe she didn't love the teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it wasn't, he was an older gentleman. Maybe it just like wasn't a good fit for her as far as personality wise. Mm -hmm. And the practicing sounds like that was a real, was that the issue of practicing? Was that, was the teacher um, expressing that to be problematic or was that more of a problem that was going on at home that you, there was a battle going on between you and Well, it was clear that she wasn't going to learn it unless she practiced. And she sort of, I think, thought she was going to pick up a guitar and be the next uh, Britney Spears. I know that probably aged me quite a bit. But um, or, or or age your daughter, yeah. Or no, no, no. Actually, no. Definitely age you. Had you said Taylor Swift, maybe. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> so um, okay. You said something. Sorry to interrupt, but you said something. I think it's really interesting. You said, and I'm just curious. Do you have an extra like eight minutes? Is that okay? I just want to. Sure. I think this is sure. important to skip over. You talked about that. You felt like she wasn't going to get good. It, or any good if she wasn't really practicing? No, not even good. Like I wasn't expecting her to get good. I was more just like, she wasn't gonna learn it. Like she thought she'd just be able to pick it up and strum the guitar and you know, the lights would go on and she'd be fabulous. She didn't realize that she couldn't, she didn't even wanna like learn the notes. She, she had a hard time understanding that without learning the notes, you can't play. Like you have to learn the notes first in order to play songs. Yeah. And then once you learn the notes, then it gets fun. Yeah. Okay. That's this is really all just super help, helpful in, information. Um, so I'm curious now. So now, so why are you now, you know, it sounds like you had this not so great experience in the past with uh, another teacher. So why now, why are you um, rethinking, you know, this idea of uh, seeking out lessons for her? What's changed since then? Um, she, well, we purchased a guitar, so we have the guitar and we invested so far. So, um, and she still wants to learn. So I was hoping maybe a different experience with a different teacher mm. might, might help, you know, might turn her onto it again. Can you share with me what, does music lesson success look like for you? What will her lessons look like? Not maybe the lessons, but in terms of how she's going to feel um, that's going to make you go, okay, this is what we were looking for. Um, I think just a motivation to do it beyond the lesson, um, to do it at home, to practice, to, you know, learn the notes and, and, keep growing. I, I don't care what kind of guitar player she is or ends up being. Um, I would just like her to enjoy it and have fun and want to do it. Yeah. As opposed to me being like, Liel, it's time to practice your guitar. Liel, it's time to practice, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is really great. And I, I just kind of want to, you know, this is going to really help me understand how our how our program can can help you and 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 help liel so our approach to lessons it's really based on the exact same way kids learn language kids mm -hmm. when we you know when we learn to speak we listen first we imitate those around us and then we start speaking and then over time we become frustrated that we can't read and that we don't you know, that we can't communicate on that level, that we have the desire to learn. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just curious, did, did you take lessons a, as a child? For music? No. Yeah. You, you didn't. No. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of parents who do, they, or the story that you're telling me about Liel, it's common for a lot of parents, as you can imagine, to kind of go through that too, that, you know, they're not liking their lessons so much, they're not practicing. And like I said at, at the beginning of our, our, our call, is that we really believe that every kid loves music. They love the thought of playing it, but I blame teachers for kids not falling in love with it. You know, had, mm -hmm. had this teacher 
focused on, okay, how can I get Liel to be up in playing within just a few minutes? I want Liel to go home. And this is exactly how it would work at our studio is that our goal is going to be for her to leave that first lesson and be able to like play for you. And it, it, does she have brothers or sisters? Uh-huh. Yeah. She's so one of each. Right. So, you know, we'd want her to, that day to go home and play for dad, play for her brothers and sisters and have something tangible. And just like, like I said, the way kids learn um, languages, we want her speaking music first. And we would not even introduce note reading until we know that she can play a little bit, that she's got the, the confidence and, and that she's really ready to, to grow because it's like putting a book in front of a three-year-old. And, and my hunch is that this teacher was probably teaching her how to read notes, teaching her the names and notes, very important stuff. But most likely, your daughter would go home from her lesson and it wasn't clear for her what to practice. How, mm -hmm. how, how old was she when she was in lessons? Uh, it was right before she turned seven. Okay. And was she, so she's six. Was she, at the time, was she doing homework yet? No, it was during the summer. So giving telling a six-year-old go home and practice is like telling a six-year-old go home and do their homework. They don't know how. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but have your kids ever come to you and said, mom, um, I need help with my homework? Right. And they, yeah. they don't know how to do it. They don't mm -hmm. know the process, you know? And so we take that into consideration, you know, when, when we're teaching someone her age is, again, we want her up we want her playing on day one. We want her to walk out of her um, first lesson, just feeling really good about herself and feeling like music is something that she can do. Does, does this sound like something Liel would, would enjoy? A hundred percent. Well, great. Well, I, let me tell we have, um, we have two openings right now. We have a Tuesday at four o'clock and a Thursday at um, 530. Would either one of those times work better for you? So can I ask uh, what, what's involved financially? Sure. So lessons are, they're $150 a month. It's a 30 minute uh, lesson. And what we'll do is um, everyone's on, on auto pay. So we'll just make this a very convenient process. So, you, you know, you give us your card information and then we'll draft it on, on the first of every month. Okay. So, okay. so which, what, what day sounds And is there you? like any cancellation option or like if um, I, if it's not working? So here's the way our, our cancellation policy works is we have teachers on schedule that have set times for uh, makeup lessons and mm -hmm. it's, it would just be up to you. Like, let's say for, um, you know, some reason you, you can't make it and mm -hmm. um, you need to cancel, you just would go online and you would schedule your own makeup, but you just have to find a, a time that's available. And, and what's nice is these are small group makeup classes. So even if she is just loving her instrument so much and she wants to come in an extra day just to do, get some more playing in, you can go in and sign up for one of these classes. So you don't even have to miss a lesson to take a makeup. That's just something, a, a feature that we provide to mm -hmm. all, all of our students. But it can be, you know, if you're going to be out, let's say for two weeks, let's say in the summer, in July, you can just um, really any time throughout the year, just make up those classes or take free um, classes. Okay. Um, so are the lessons private? Yeah. So the great question. So the lessons themselves are private, but the, the, the makeup classes can have up to three people in it. And what's so cool about those is, first of all, she might be the only one in that class. It can, mm -hmm. they are placed by um, age mm -hmm. and they get to do exercises in those classes that they typically don't get to do during the private lessons because you know, she, she might be there on guitar and then there might be a kid there for keyboard. They're gonna do, um, she's actually gonna have an ensemble experience that, that her private teacher can't create that in the lesson. Right. So what happens a lot is kids come to these makeup classes, they love it and they want to do it more. And we say to the parents, look, these are free. So you mm -hmm. just 
come when, when, whenever you want. It's just a perk of being a student here and, and being a, a, a part of our community. Okay, cool. Okay, so Tuesday or Thursday, which one? Tuesday is four o'clock and then that Thursday is uh, 5.30. Uh, Tuesday. Great. So here's what I'm going to do is um, when we get off the phone, I'm going to um, email you um, a, a recap of what you know, we, we talked about, and I'm also going to have a little link there that you can share with Liel, just so she can kind of get a feel for what her experience is going to be like here. Okay. Well, great. Um, okay. So, Allison, thank you so much. That was thank cool. you. A um, couple quick questions I have for you, and I obviously didn't ask you for your email. I mean, I typically, if this was a real sales call, I mm -hmm. would ask for that. What about that felt different for you? or maybe unexpected or even enjoyable? Um, I, I liked what you said about um, just making the kid feel good. Um, the let my last experience, it just felt like it was like very important that you be sitting the right way and holding the guitar the right way and practicing. And it just, um, I liked the idea of just her just feeling good and her having fun as opposed to, you know, it just didn't, it felt a lot more, um, I don't know if laid back is the right word or it felt more attainable and mm. like it would be more fun for her. Does anyone have any questions they want, I want to share with Al, ask Allison? She can't see your questions, but I can. Um, so if anyone, whoa, went a little crazy there. Okay, no questions for you. Um, Allison, thank you so much. You're welcome. Being here, and um, I hope to see you at your first lesson next. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> if, if I had a school, we would have you. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be there. All right, very good. Well, thanks so All much. All right, thank you. All right, bye. Bye. Okay, awesome. So that was Allison, a real live sales pitch. And um, I really kind of dug into that need analysis a little bit. I really wanted to hear that, that story. Um, let me get into, so here's a, a pitch here. This is kind of when she called. And just like um, with Allison, I said, does this sound like something Liel would enjoy? I didn't say, are you ready to buy? I got her to say a yes again, her second yes. Let's move on. So here's, some, here's my sales pitch breakdown. Here's some things that I did. I talked about our approach. So this makes me sound purposeful. I talked about, I used this line, based on the way kids learn a language. Different, that's different and unexpected. It's attention grabbing. I came right out on, on that. We teach music the same way kids learn how to speak a language. So that's unexpected, it's different, and that grabs people's attention. Did you take lessons? Pulls the customers back into the narrative. She said no. Has she said, said yes? Probably got a good chance that she had a negative experience. I'm just curious, for, uh, for those listening to the live webinar, um, what percentage of the parents share with you? Uh, what, what percentage of your parents in your studio share with you that they had a negative experience with music lessons? Um, by finding out that information, you can understand that that's a potential pain that the mom's going to have. I also said, why, um, this is why so many kids hate music lessons. So I'm validating her feelings or her child's experience and I'm building trust. And then I talked about having feeling a sense of success and accomplishment. That's what mom's main objective is, is for her um, child to feel a sense of success and accomplishment. So let's move on to the next slide. Getting to your second yes. I said, does this sound like something your um, child would enjoy? She said, yes, this forces moms to think about her child's needs and not, her, not hers. I'm gonna um, move quickly because kind of running tight on time here. So I asked for the sale. I said, um, I did the, an assumptive close. I assumed she was ready. Out of, I said, does this sound like something that Liel would enjoy? Yes. Well, we have an opening on Tuesday or Thursday. I'm assuming she's ready. 
So I'm putting, it's a little soft pressure, but it, and it creates a sense of urgency by only offering two options. Here's an assumptive a close and scarcity in action. Um, well, this is exactly what, what I said, so we'll skip this slide. The final yes. You know, okay, Tuesday or whatever she said, Thursday, five o'clock, and then I said, I'm gonna email you a summary of what we talked about. Again, I'm establishing like, wow, look how organized this guy is and how together he is. I even said, I'm gonna email you a video link you can share with Liel. An unexpected um, addition. This is a Zig Ziglar quote. A prospect says no because they don't know enough to say yes. And um, I love that. Something to chew on there. Objections. I want to check out, out with some other schools, some scheduling conflicts. These are common objections. People, let me get back to you. Your lessons are expensive. I know you're selling to me option B, but I want option A. So, for example, if you have group classes, and you're trying to sell somebody in group classes. And they're saying, but I want really, I want private. You have to be ready for these objections. I'm gonna tackle some of these objections. When a customer is objecting, it's because they don't see the value yet. They, um, you have to get the customer to sell to themselves. Ah, here it is. They don't see the value. This is the right slide. They don't see the value. You, have to, you can get them to sell to themselves by saying, are there any aspects of our program that resonate with you? that sound appealing. And then they're gonna say, well, you know, this thing's, you know, the group thing sounds fun because they get to perform. Now what's happening is the mom's selling to herself. What about your objection? What, is there anything about this that did sound appealing? Identify the source of resistance. What about, uh, what about our programs doesn't appeal to you? So you're trying to figure out what about it didn't resonate with mom. And then there's a price objection, which I almost, kind of sense I was going to get from Allison. And I um, did this a little bit. I kind of, here's the number. And then I moved into the convenience that um, our auto pay is, is going to cover. Sales tip five, pace as you pitch. I literally, I like getting up and walking around. It helps me focus and smile as you talk. It's a Zig Ziglar tip. People can pick up on that warm energy and that happiness you're exuding when you're smiling. Even if it's a fake smile, it impacts your, your tone. A lot of voice teachers will say that, right? Smile, this is your singing. It's gonna, the way you position your mouth impacts your tone. Sales tip six, don't mention the price unless asked. Notice I didn't tell Allison about the price. She asked me. And once asked, you state the price, transition to a positive thought, which is what I did. Our lessons are 150 a month. I talked about the convenience of it. I didn't get to, I just, here, here's the facts. And then I was slowly trying to transition her back. Limited time offer. Okay, so that completes the, uh, the presentation. I wanna share with you guys a, a offer. It's for uh, my music studio mastery program. It's a small group coaching program. I know some of you on the call are in this program. If you reserve your spot by Friday before midnight, um, you will get this offer. It's a money back guarantee. And we'll talk about that guarantee in a minute. So what is Music Studio Mastery? Music Studio Mastery is a small group coaching program to help you develop and sharpen your leadership, business, marketing, and sales skills. Your problems, challenges, and stressors are shared by other music studios. The collective experience, knowledge, and wisdom of the group can help you take your studio to the next level. We'll go through every facet of running a music studio and explore ways to make improvements that will lead to growth and better management of your business. I'll serve as the moderator and the chief officer of accountability because I mean, really, I mean, accountability is what, is what it's all about. You don't have accountability in your business. You're the boss. What's nice about um, this group is that you're going to be accountable to the group. It's the group will put positive pressure on you to, ha the, um, to you know, have your assignments you know, ready by, by the next meeting. Music Studio Mastery meets twice a month. It's an hour long Zoom call and you'll be placed in a small group of eight or less motivated studio owners. The program includes weekly bonus materials and worksheets. Um, this is what other music studio owners are saying about Music Studio Mastery. And uh, you know, nothing just but just amazing success stories. You can read these in the replay because I'm running tight on time. Let's get to the special offer, expires at midnight tomorrow night. 
And um, the group's going to be meeting. The first meeting is on October 24th. It meets from one to every uh, other Thursday from one to two o'clock. There's a 30 day money back guarantee so that you can do a whole month of the program, or two meetings. And if you're not loving it, give you a full refund. It's $93 a month. It's $15 off if you're a Kids Rock partner, $25 off if you're a Kids Rock and Junior Rockers partner. All you got to do is go to this link here below and go to coaching. And I think that, yeah, that concludes the presentation. Any questions? Let's go over some questions because I see some. The chat is blank. Oh, okay. Any, any, any questions, um, comments? And hopefully in the Q&A, we can, we can all see. Um, everything. I'll give you guys a moment here. I'm going to put on a new message. Um, this is so awesome. Thank you for having us. I, I am, I love that's from Kate. Um, do you have an actual script? So yes. Um, everything was a script, like the mission statement that was scripted. And then the sales, Thing where I, I talk about, um, you know, at, at our school, we teach music the way kids teach a language. I really, I mean, take, you know, take what you can from this, but you've got to make it your own. You've got to come up with your own script and you have to live by it and you have to deliver it. So the things that I want you guys to think about with your scripts is um, now you don't have to come out, you know, with an elevator pitch or mission statement. That's just something I like to do. The big questions are, what inspired you to seek out lessons, listen carefully, take notes. And then when I talk about, or when you talk about your program at our music school, our lessons are like this. That's something that you could open up with a scripted statement, but you got to weave back in. And I, I think I weaved in um, some of Allison's pain points. Really, I, I wish I could have talked to her longer about what her impressions were of it. Um, so you will have to create your own script, but in the replay, you can, there's lots of language here that feel free to, to copy it and, and paste it. Um, thank you, Dave. Is a call available on your website? The call will not, so the call will be when I send you a, a replay of it, you know, you're going to see this whole thing in real time and you can watch it again. You can take note. Um, Oh, you know, I think what I want to make a note, I'm going to email you guys my notes from, um, you know, from the webinar, just in case if you want to like copy and paste any of, of the copy here. Here's something. Um, this was, oh, do you have a very nice balance, customer centric and yeah, service centric. That's the key. You know, talk about... That's the hard thing. It's hard talking about customer. It's so easy. And I, I want to share a quick story with you guys. I called um, 20 different music studios and eight of them were franchises. All of them, except one, was all about their product, the product. And only one of them asked me what my name was. Only one of them asked me what my child's name was. That's a problem. You can get a competitive edge today by making a point to get those names and to start the conversation off with a question to mom. What inspired you to seek out music lessons? And then dig, try to extract some more in information from that. The mom might just open up and start, you know, talking away and you're going to get everything you need. And the, and the example here, the mom wasn't really opening up. So I had to, you know, extract you know, information. Allison when I say the, the, the example here, the example on the slide, Allison was pretty talkative, but I wanted to get, um, I'm really curious about this practice thing. And I'm going to do a podcast soon on how to cure the practice problem. You should not be losing students to practice or to kids not practicing. Um, the answer isn't to, I, I've tried every trick in, in the book when it comes to try to get kids to practice. The moment I told parents that it's okay if your child doesn't practice. If your child doesn't practice because they don't understand what that means yet. We're going to get there. And um, I saved a lot of students. I'll talk about that on the podcast. Here's some more questions. Um, wait, what just happened this week? Deanna says something just happened this week. We'll see what she has to say. 
ah, you lost a student to practice. So um, share with us how you handled that um, or what you said. And I'll never forget, I, I interviewed a bunch of different moms about practicing. And I said to one mom, she's like, yeah, I want to sign my kid up for lessons, but I'm not ready to have that battle yet with my child about practicing. It's like, first of all, why is music? Why do you have to practice to play it? You don't have to practice to dance. You don't have to practice to, um, to do gymnastics. You don't have to practice to play on the little league team. But music, you have to practice? That's ridiculous. You have to practice to get good at music. You have to practice to get good at ballet. You have to practice to get good at anything. But none of these moms are interested in good. That's, that desire comes from the child. If you can come out on the front end and say, look, I'm not worried about practicing at this point. You know, here's a good strategy. Take at the end of the lesson, make a little video, have mom come in very first lesson and make a video of what they did. Have the kid playing, they gotta play. It can't be them with the book, kind of tiptoeing their way and tripping all over the notes. Have them play some little vamp in time. Sounds good, accompany them. Say, mom, make a video of it. Okay, next week in the lesson, we're gonna do that again, and we're gonna add on to it. Mom, make a video of this. This is what we're doing next week. Great, we'll see you next week at the lesson. Now, the kid, you didn't say to practice. And you want mom in on this. Mom, we're not going to talk about practicing yet. You're, if your child had such a good time, they're going to at home review. Let them see the video. And then they're going to play it on their instrument. But do not tell their kid. Don't tell your kid they have to practice. No one tells their, their kid that they have to practice um, their curveball. They just, that desire comes from the kid. Practice should be a child's desire. It should not be an expectation. I'm going to talk more about that. Um, I should be wearing my glasses. Here's some comments here. Lessons. Well, truth is, I'm, I'm trying to reduce my schedule so I don't fight it. The kid's not an ideal client for me anyway. I, I didn't want to fight it. Okay, so they weren't a good, it's from Deanna. You know, this person wasn't a great uh, client. And, um, but I really think there's a way to reduce practicing by coming out and saying, look, I'm knowledgeable. I'm an expert. And you're, it's okay if your kid doesn't practice. Right now, the objective is something else. And here's the objective. I'm going to map it out for you. I'll never forget when my kid went in, I don't know, first or second grade, we called the teacher and said, hey, how come our kid doesn't have any homework? Oh, well, you know, studies have shown that, um, you know, homework really isn't effective with kids this age. And I was like, great, you're the expert. I was expecting homework because I did homework when I was this age and I hated it. And I was expecting it. You're telling me it's not necessary and that it's not really that beneficial. Great. And I totally backed off as, as a parent. So this is a huge marketing um, opportunity in terms of how do you market and educate your customers about practice? Um, because it is the elephant in the room. I cannot tell you how many times I'm like, ah, oh, this kid's not practicing. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. And what do you say? And then I, I used to try to be the teacher that would say, well, if you don't practice, Jimmy, that's going to be a problem. That doesn't work. You can't scare kids into practicing. All right. Any other questions or comments? You guys are really, oh, wait, there's something. Nope, nothing there. Um, so sit tight. I'm going to upload this onto a private YouTube uh, channel, and then I'm going to email you Encore presentation. You guys have a great day.